Breaking news, Eric Ten Hag has been sacked from Manchester United, which is the worst possible news for those of us who do not support Manchester United. For Manchester United fans, it's been a long term, long time coming. It has got a bit toxic. While I think there's broader conversations to have about the overall structure and direction of Manchester United, in which they clearly know that because the Ineos group are looking to trim line things off the field. They've brought in a couple of people in the boardroom and those kind of positions. Eric Ten Hag has officially been sacked. I do think in isolation to what he can can personally control at Man United, I don't think you can blame him for everything. Players and everyone has to take responsibility. That being said, in the best and possible way, everything's a manager's fault. He has he said errors, errors come to an end. He must have been speaking about his own. You know, for all the, the talk about being a Dutch manager and all of that, Manchester United do not play total football like Johan Cruyff or anything like it. They cannot defend. The midfield is woeful. The signings he's made, which have been particularly his own, haven't really done anything. There's no structure. You can't defend, can't attack, nothing in midfield. You know, whether Man United win, lose or draw, and obviously they lost to West Ham, which I feel was a bit harsh on them. Nothing is going right for them. And, you know, Man United, this tells me that the owners have somebody in mind. Maybe they don't. And Ruud van Nistelrooy takes the role for a while. But if they was able to sign somebody in the summer um, where you heard they were talking to a lot of managers, not quite sure what happened there, they probably would have let Ten Hag go. If it was a lot more of a sunnier climate at Manchester United at the moment, he probably would have stayed. Unfortunately, it's not. Forgive me if I'm wrong. Manchester United, a massive club, biggest club in England, arguably the first slash second best, big, not best, biggest club in the world, give or take with Real Madrid, depending on how you look at it. Nothing is, 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 is unacceptable. That's the only thing you can say. Now, Eric Ten Hag, I guess, can leave with his head held high because, you know, history is going to remember he was poor at Manchester United, but it's not going to remember he was 14th, et cetera, et cetera. He's won two trophies. You know, he's one of the managers post Alex Ferguson who have won trophies. I don't know where Manchester United stand. Do they write off their season? Have they got a new manager in place? They've been linked with Julian Nagelsmann, Xavi, and any sort of manager that is credible and could change their fortunes will continuously be linked with them. Have they just pulled the plug now because you know it can't go on and it was it, the climate is bad bearing in mind shaky performances all season lost to West Ham shaky against Fenerbahce or have they finally received positive feedback that whoever they're looking for is now wanting to take the role if you obviously look on Manchester United's website and everyone else you know the best possible way to start on Monday for Manchester United fans club statement Ten Hag has been sacked Eric Ten Hag has left his role as Manchester United's first team manager. Eric was appointed in April 2022 and led the club to two domestic trophies, winning the Cat Yarabal Cup in 2023 and the FA Cup in 2024. We are grateful to Eric for everything he has done during his time with us and wish him well for the future. Ruud van Nistelrooy will take charge of the team as interim head coach, supported by current coaches staff whilst a permanent head coach is recruited. Now, you could argue maybe Ruud doesn't want the job, but Manchester United history has also, it's not like respectfully to Mikel Arteta. It's not like Mikel Arteta where he was part of the culture staff and then said, well, I want to be a manager. Ruud van Nistelrooy has been a manager and I said it in the summer. I'm not being cynical, but I personally feel Ruud van Nistelrooy went there Obviously, I'm sure he wanted to work with Ten Hag and the players and he's a good coach, but I think he went there. He knew I'd buy my time. I'd get my opportunity as an interim manager. If I impress, I go and do my thing. You can't rule out Ruud van Nistelrooy actually becoming Manchester United's permanent manager. Eric Ten Hag's left. He's packed his bags. What? To be honest with you, you know, if me or you, if I got sacked from YouTube and you lot got sacked from your jobs, we might be a bit doom and gloom, but he's got, what, 14, 15 million payoff and Obviously, football clubs have money. What is 14 to 15 million? It's nice, isn't it, for some clubs? This just tells me that we'll take the hit. We don't care no more. We'll take the hit. We'll go again, really and truly, which isn't the wrong thing. Ten Hag spent over 650 million as Manchester United manager. They sit 14. 21st in the Europa League and have made their worst start to a season. Again, stats are not everything, but you can't argue that. And you look at these signings, they're not bad players, you know. Uh, Mason Mount struggling with injuries. Anthony's horrible, I must admit, in probably what helped Ten Hag get sacked because you personally probably verified he'd be a good player. Absolutely rubbish. You know, Diallo can't really buy real minutes under under Ten Hag and you'd imagine with Ruud van Nistelrooy would get a lot more starts. Casemiro, you got shot in a do dodgy motor and to be fair, that is the sort of signing Manchester United have done previously. But these are not bad players, you know. These players, well, with the exception for me of Anthony, these players, if they were at other clubs, they'd look all right. And you even look at Lissandro Martinez and Onana and there's plenty of question marks. I think personally, you could take William Saliba, Van Dijk, two of the best centre-halves in the league, 
put them in Manchester United's team and they might do a lot better, but I think they would be rubbish as well because there's no ethos on defending, defending from the front, you know, defending in midfield, winning your individual battles. Again, I'm not naive. Ten Hag knows more about football than me. I'm sure he's working on something in the training ground and he knows all of this. But whatever you're working with on the training ground and what's correlating to the football pitch, it's not happening, is it, people? So there's a lot of issues in that regard. Casemiro did not work. Lissandro is a good player, but I think he's disillusioned. Oh, Nana's got little things he can improve as a goalie, but he's not exactly helped with those in front of them. Ramesh Hoyslin's a work in progress, to be fair. Uh, Mason Mount probably, you know, got his own issues, cannot stay fit. Dilit looks okay, if I'm honest. Eric Ten Hag has to go, people. Like, it has to go. And this is the best possible news Manchester United fans probably hear. Courtesy of live score, when you look at the numbers behind Ten Hag, 128 games, 70 wins, 23 um, draws, 35 losses and a win percentage of 55%, which I must admit ain't actually even the worst. And finally, people, once again, in case you misheard me or the point went over your head, Romano and everybody is saying Ruud van Nistelrooy will be Manchester United interim manager as exclusively revealed earlier today. He's the immediate replacement for Ten Hag, decision made internally. So... I wonder when they decided to pull the plug. Was it this was always going to be the West Ham game? Because I must admit, Ten Hag needs to go anyways, yeah? And there was the same old question marks where Manchester United were concerned under Ten Hag anyways. But I felt sorry. I, I feel the West Ham game, they got they got robbed by the referee. They didn't kill their chances. And one thing that's always annoyed me about Ten Hag, I think he looks for excuses too much. You're Manchester United manager. It seems like he blames everything but him. I know I'm, you know, deluded, but it seems like, you know... Man United could lose 5-0. He'll come out and say, we we we, we deserve to win, etc. And there's not a single fragment of why you would hold on to Ten Hag. I'm not using this to get at Ten Hag or big up Mikel Arteta, but, you know, Mikel Arteta has got his own question marks. Even when it was dark times at Arsenal, you could see the little bits and pieces he wanted to do. The same at the moment with Maresca at, um, at Chelsea. If things go left after for Liverpool for making a blistering start, you can kind of see things. There are teams below Manchester United that will finish below Manchester United that have an ethos. You look at Ipswich's McKenna. Yeah, they might get relegated. Or Gary O'Neill at Wolves, who are kind of struggling. Or Nuno Espirito Santo, who at the moment is doing quite well at Nottingham Forest. Almost every team excluding Manchester United, have a style of play and ethos. Like I said, you don't see the Ajax stuff. They're not great defensively. Yes, you can ask questions of the players, but it feels like a privileged kid crying about stuff, if I'm honest with you, because, you know, I know they've got issues, but you've signed 100 million and you've got no change out of it. You've got a talented Diallo. You've got Hoijlin. You've got Rashford. Yes, there's been injuries, etc. But there's many of those attackers that you would bite your arm off to take at other clubs or if they were available, other teams would be interested. So why are they failing to score goals? Why is the midfield horrible? Why is the mid the defence horrible? Why is the goalie not protected? Your first, you know, your first attacker is... is um. Oh, no, no, in the modern day. That's why keepers play with their feet. Your first defender is the striker. United can't press well. In the modern day, if you cannot press well and you've got no structure and you're not compact, you're in trouble. They probably should have sacked him after the Spurs game where Van der Ven's galloped forward. It's completely horrible. It's square pegs in round holes. All he can do is blame himself. You know, he's got 14 odd million quid. He's managed the biggest club in England. Um, You know, he, he has won two trophies. So he can somewhat leave with his head held high. But this just tells me United, I won't quite say right off the season, but probably writing off the season because, you know, results dictate any everything. If they get a run of form, maybe they could get top four. Maybe there's an FA Cup or a League Cup run. Potentially, they could get out of the Europa League mess. But this just tells me, you know what, October, let's pull the plug. And let's be honest, this has been coming. This isn't like he's lost eight games in a row and there's pressure. This has been coming for a while under Eric Ten Hag. For Manchester United, pardon me, people. They, you know, well, two days time, they'll be playing Leicester in the EFL last round of 16. They have Chelsea on the weekend, which ironically is the Jadon Sancho derby, but he's technically on loan, so he can't play. They then are back in Europa League action against Parkour. They're then against Leicester. They then travel to Ipswich and Bodo Glint. Now, on paper, all of those are tough games in the Premier League, as we know. But it's an, quote unquote, with, with Man United's form, none of it. And the Chelsea game's a big game, but... It might be one for Man United to get a run of fixtures, to get a bit of a feel-good factor. We all know managerial bounces is a, is a good thing. I think, you know, the one good thing I would say with Manchester United um, installing Ruud van Nistelrooy is whether he's good enough or not to lead the club in the months and weeks and however he's there or on a permanent basis, they'll give him a chance because they know it's not his mess. Obviously, 
Ruud van Nistelrooy is irrelevant in the sense of it doesn't matter what you did as a player. You're now the manager or the caretaker manager at the moment. But owing to his Manchester United history, I think he will unite the fan base somewhat. I do think Manchester United fans' expectations are on the floor, so there's not much there. And I think Man United need to go back to basics. They need to find a manager that, for me, has courage, for me, has competency, because Eric Ten Hag has not got that. And for me, doesn't look for excuses. Ten Hag, it needed to happen. So you've only got yourself to blame. But yeah, it's terrible news for me with, with Ten Hag. I just wish they trust the process a bit more. You know, it looks like we can't laugh at United anymore, man. And I don't know whether they'll get Julian Nagelsmann. I don't know if they'll get Xavi, you know, the former Barcelona player and manager. They're linked with everybody, almost any credible manager. You know, had Thomas Tuchel not taken the England job and likewise Pochettino at, um, with America... You would Im I'm not saying they would have been the guys, but you would imagine there'd be articles about them. I don't know if Man United go for, I don't know how to make it make sense, but a Jose Mourinho, a household name. I don't know if they go for an unknown quote unquote like what we have with Arteta or what Chelsea have with, with Maresca. I don't know if they're going to give Ruud van Nistelrooy the chance. You know, I just think United need to sing from the same hymn sheet recruitment is mixed. One minute you're buying young players, then you're buying players that are past it like Casemiro and just wasting money. I just think United need to sing from the same hymn sheet. And I do think they will because it, the Ineos group made a big decision at the moment. It is premature, but made a big decision. They brought people in on the back room to make things happen. But, you know, they need to sing from the same hymn sheet because at the same time, too many chefs in the kitchen in spoiled the mill so yeah man what a way to start monday really and truly i was literally sat here editing an arsenal video and i just saw the news so i thought let me rustle a quick video together for you lot on that note though most importantly you lot stay safe stay blessed i'll link up with you lot again peace <laughs>